Hey fellas, me Trapper here. It is a drippy, rainy, dark day in the woods of Alabama. But you know what? It beats being in the office any day of the week. Now today, I'm going to talk about loading snares. I get a lot of questions about this. Uh, people email me a lot, you know, uh, how do you load snares? Uh, why do you load snares? Uh, how can you learn to do it? That sort of thing. So we're going to do two things today. Number one, I'm going to show you how I build and load a snare. And number two, I'm going to show you uh, the difference between a loaded and a non-loaded snare. And number three, I'm going to show you what you get if you buy your snares from a dealer such as southernsnares.com who will deliver your snares ready to use and uh, already loaded for you and what a tremendous difference that makes. Now loading is simply the process of putting a bend into your cable so that your snare holds a more circular or natural round loop. Because when you first build a snare, when you take an, an aircraft cable and turn it into a snare, you're going to have a sort of a teardrop shaped loop. Now 7x7 seven seven cable is a lot uh, more loopy and you get a lot bigger teardrop with a 7x7 seven seven cable than you do a 1x19. But you still need to load both of them if you want a properly rounded snare. The second advantage that a loaded snare gives you, other than just a more natural round opening, is that it tends to fire quicker. The animal doesn't have to drag the loop shut around their neck. They enter the loop, touch the loop, and the loop tends to jump closed around their neck. So it fires rather than being drug closed. Now, loading a snare, in my opinion, is more of an art than a science and you have to develop a muscle memory and a feel for the job. And different people load snares differently. I load mine before I construct them. Some people will go ahead and build the snare and then load the snare after they construct it. Either way is fine, whatever works for you. Some people use a, a piece of steel rod that's maybe uh, 3 8 of an inch thick, half inch thick. Uh, I personally use a nail and it's just because uh, that's what I've always used and that's how I learned to do it and it works for me. But basically when I load a snare I want to take that cable and I want to find the natural bend in the cable and then I want to run it over my nail and I'm using an increasing and then a decreasing pressure on it and I'll do it two or three times until I get the load that I want. This is a uh, hard to explain but it's probably a lot easier for me to show you so let's go out to my workbench and I'll show you what I do to load a snare okay what I've got here is a four foot piece of snare cable this is 1 16th inch uh, 119 uh, 1 by 19 twist and you can see I've put I've already hammered my stop button on the end right there that's the terminal end of the cable now the critical thing when you go to load snares is there's going to be a natural bend in that cable you can see and I'm going to try to see I'll rotate it see how it'll rotate up you want to find that natural bend and then stay with it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put additional bend going with the direction of the cable right through here and let me show you how I do that you can see on the side of my workbench here I just have a little nail some people will use a thick piece of rod. Um, I just use a nail. It's what I'm used to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with that natural bend on that cable. And I'm going to run it back and forth over this nail. And I'm going to start off using a good amount of pressure. And I'm going to decrease the pressure as it goes along. And I'm only going to load about one-third of the snare. I only want about one-third of the snare loaded, so uh, less than a foot on this. I'm simply going to place, place the cable across the nail. Then I'm going to repeat the process. I'm using heavy pressure at first. and decreasing pressure 
and you want to end up with something that looks like a crook neck, like a shepherd's neck. Now, you can overload the snare, put too much of a bend on it, or you can underload it and not put enough. That right there, I need a little bit more on it, but that right there is about what I'm looking for. Now, once I've got my load in my snare, I want to put my reverse bend, and this is important. You want to bend that cable back 180 degrees against the grain of the bend, and at this point, we're ready to thread the snare lock on it. Now, you can see here is the final result. Notice how nice and round that loop is. You can see there's my reverse bend, and you can see right where my thumb is, that's where I applied the maximum amount of force and then brought it on down so that you get a nice round loop. And like I say, it's just uh, it's more of an art than a science. You just sort of have to fool with it. You're going to have to apply more pressure on a 7x7 cable than you are a 1x19, but that's the end result and that's what you're looking for. That's a nice looking snare right there. So you can see it's not hard work and it is it's not complicated it just requires a feel for the job and when you first start loading your own snares you're gonna screw up a lot of cable you're gonna corkscrew a lot of cable accept that fact deal with it don't get mad at yourself just learn from it and keep practicing <clears throat> that's why if you're not into building your own snares and doing all of this labor if you're gonna buy the snares pre-made you need to buy the snares from somebody that is good at making snares and that's why I recommend southernsnares.com. You can contact Brian McKee over there. He's in southern Georgia, and uh, he makes excellent snares. Let me show you one of his snares uh, that he makes. And keep in mind, this is a 7x7 seven seven cable snare, which is uh, it's hard to load a 7x7 seven seven snare and get it this circular in this round. But let me show you what kind of job he does. Now when you order a dozen snares from southernsnares.com, this is what you're going to get. You can see the snares are fully assembled, they're all coiled up, ready to go, but they're not treated. The reason for this is simple. He doesn't know whether you're trapping in the north of Canada or whether you're trapping in the deep swamps of the south. Also, different people have different ways that they prefer to treat and handle their snares. So that's up to you, unless you specifically request something otherwise. Now this is a 7x7 snare built by southernsnares.com. Notice how that snare is loaded and it has almost a completely round shape to it even though it's a 7x7 cable snare. And 7x7 is notoriously droopy and has a teardrop shape to it. This snare does not. Now here's a southernsnares.com snare on the outside versus a homemade non-loaded snare on the inside. Notice how that 7x7 cable on the inside is makes a complete teardrop shape whereas the loaded snare on the outside from southernsnares.com makes almost a perfectly oval loop. Well I hope this has been useful. We've taken a look at what it takes to build your own snares and load them yourself. Uh, we've taken a look at what a proper pre-built uh, store-bought snare uh, looks like and who you can get it from. So anyway, if you would like to support this channel, uh, please give me a like on the video. Feel free to subscribe. And most importantly, if you go to patreon.com slash meat trapper, you can become a supporter of the channel and you can unlock a lot of content, including all the past issues of Meat Trapper Radio, which there's almost 90 episodes uh, up there now. And you can also unlock my Resistance Trapping series, which we are still about midway through on that. I've got, I believe, eight episodes that are up. And Resistance Trapping is about trapping in a militia or a uh, wartime scenario when you're not going to have all the fancy tools, hammers, baits, and lures. You may have a trap or two, and you may have to survive indefinitely by using those traps. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.